everybody. We are back with New York Times best-selling author Danielle Walker, who is making us a fall off the bone Cabernet braised short ribs yes. with a parsnip turnip puree. Say that three times. Yeah, fast. right. It is absolutely delicious. Yes. By the way, it smells smell so it. Good. You know who would know that it's delicious? Is Matt Iceman. He's already in. You, uh, in why are you guys always? You put food in front of me. I'm going to start, and this is fall off the bone. Good, good. Fall good. Into I guess your we should mouth. Start. Fall into yeah. your yeah. mouth. Right. Also joining us from American Housewife, Deidre Bader. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Hello. And Shelly E. Johnson, who's going to be performing for us a little bit later. Thank you so much. And of course, of course, I don't need no introduction for Matt right. because he's already he's already yeah. finished yeah. his meal. Eating, eating. Okay, so this is also going to be in our um, Home and Family Christmas Cookbook, which you can find at HallmarkChannel.com right there. All right, yes. so Danielle, this was inspired by your husband. Yes. Was it not? He loves short ribs, which who doesn't, who right? Who doesn't? And so I kind of create a different recipe for each of his birthdays usually. So every one of my cookbooks has some sort mm. of a short rib recipe oh, because of him. Oh. So today we're doing a Cabernet braised short rib because we live kind of close to Napa. That was my family there. Uh, and so I figured let's do some wine in it because who doesn't like things braised in wine, right? Exactly. So we are starting with English cut short ribs. I like to keep them kind of two to three inches just so they make a pretty presentation and then they're not, I mean, I guess you couldn't oh get God. enough, but. What's the difference between like English me. cut and regular short ribs? So it has the bone parallel to the meat. It just okay. really makes it super tender. And then it also kind of holds up to a long braising time. So you don't end up with just like a big lump of mush. meat and okay. mush. Yeah. Okay. So we've already got a few braised, or I mean a few browned here, but I'm gonna just add these here. And one of the things that I always learned from my grandma and then also my mother-in-law was that you don't want to skip the browning process when you're doing meat. So even if you're doing like a stew in a slow cooker, brown it first because okay. the browning oh, really adds a ton of flavor. What's it? Tons of flavor. Does it add, because one, I always think when you do it slow cook, then it just gets soft and mushy anyway, but right. does it keep a crust so, on it? Well, or? no, if you do it in a slow cooker, it's not going to keep a crust in it, but it's going to add that really deep, really wonderful flavor okay. that you get from browning. Got it. So it. Okay. I almost say go too far, like you almost think they're going to burn. Yeah. Right. It almost and gets then, that caramelization yes, on exactly, it. exactly. I so go too far because I've let it burn. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I try not I mean, to, but it does. <laughs> so what was in there that we're braising it in? So I use a little bit of ghee. I am dairy-free okay. uh, because of an autoimmune disease, but ghee is 99% lactose and casein-free, and that's usually what people can't tolerate. It's purified butter. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So okay. if you can do butter, by all means, do butter. If you can't do any dairy at all, olive oil, fine. fine. Maybe Perfect. even some bacon fat. You really want to go crazy? Oh, <laughs> so yes, how long? Yes. <laughs> how long do you do you leave it in there to? You know, it's going to depend on your pot and how hot your burner goes, but a couple minutes on each side, just until they get a really nice brown. Is on it them. seasoned before it goes yes. in there? So we put this in the fridge the night before with some salt and pepper. It just helps to get the juices mm -hmm. flowing and tenderize it, right. and a little bit of herbs too. We've got some rosemary and some thyme in there as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you forget to do it the night before, my mother-in-law made these for us actually the other night. She forgot to do it. We threw it on right before, and it was just fine. So. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, okay. if, you, if you don't have time, it's right. totally fine. All right, so I'm going to take these guys oh, out. Oh, you take them out before you add the vegetables? Yes, yeah, because okay. we want to make sure the vegetables get browned and cooked as well. So okay. go ahead and throw those in. We've got carrots, and then I'm going to have some celery and some okay. leeks. The smell and the sound. So, yeah, that. right, that yeah. sizzle, yeah. the sizzle. As soon so as the garlic really, goes in. You could change this up to really Absolutely. whatever vegetables Absolutely. you have, Absolutely, so right? grab that garlic. Yes, oh yes. Okay. I'm sorry, those were leeks? Yes, those oh, were leeks. Did you just have yellow onions? Fine. Do that as well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and a bay leaf. Yep. And a bay leaf. So there it's pretty. Go. It's a pretty forgiving recipe. Yeah. If you have other veggies on hand that you want to put in here, kind of like a beef stew, you can put in whatever you'd like. And you could make this in a slow cooker, couldn't you? Yes. So I would recommend browning it on the stove. I still think it gives it a really good flavor. But then after you're done with this process, just throw it in the slow cooker, set your timer for eight hours, and walk away. Go. Oh, how nice. Yep. We have a question. Absolutely. Yes. Um, well, his is gone. Oh, you, you need but more. His is he needs more. <laughs> yes. Um, he wants to know where the oh, vegetables please. went. Where the oh you didn't get them on your plate? They, is, well, is it okay. part of the puree? So, no, it's no. not part of the puree, ah, okay. but they do really melt down into the sauce. So, so the flavor, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So you may have gotten a few carrots and leeks in there, you just didn't notice. You they tricked get, me. So, <laughs> me. <laughs> so this is actually something that, that is self-help. Like. Believe yes. it or not, I have a two-year-old who gobbled it down the other night. So, so they, they don't know. That yeah. So go ahead. Stuff. Yeah, right. you can go the beef broth or the cabernet both. Both. Okay. So you put them back in the pot. Yeah. So we're gonna put the juices, the beef broth, and then the wine, and that just helps to lift all of that kind of browned you goodness from the bottom now you, you the pan. You are from wine country. Yeah, so. not exactly from wine country, but it's one of our favorite getaways. It's like 45 minutes away. So, so. I imagine then you're probably not going to suggest we use a two-buck <laughs> chuck for wine. Uh, so my grandma, who's Italian, always taught me that you don't want to cook with a wine that you wouldn't take a swig of in the middle of cooking. Yeah, right? well, that's not saying a lot. So, yeah, yeah, well, okay. 
Yes, good luck, Jeff. You're made. So, I do think you, you know right you don't now. need to crack open your most expensive <laughs> bottle of wine because you don't want to waste it on that. You want to enjoy that by the glass, but definitely get something that's kind of mid range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. you do taste it in this. So okay. you know if it's really kind of a, a rough tasting two dollar yeah, bottle be able of to wine, tell. you'll be able to tell. So, so then we finish this in the oven. Yes, we do. So I'm just going to add a couple more things really quick. Oh, just a little paste. tomato paste. It just kind of gives the, the sauce a little bit more body, and then just a few more of those herbs. Thank you so much. We've got more rosemary, more thyme. We're just going to dump that right in. And then I'm going to finish it in the oven, but like I said, you could do it in the slow cooker. You could just leave it on the stove top if you want, but stove top, you kind of have to babysit it for a couple hours. Right. Leave it in the oven, you can do some things around your house. You okay. know, do your laundry or take care of your kiddos. So yeah, so we're going to just in. pop that into a 350 degree oven, and it does take a couple of hours, so this is right. one of those yeah. things that takes some yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Low and slow. So no yeah. need for drum roll yet, because, right. oh no, 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 oh, no, 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 don't, no, reveal. no, no. don't reveal, don't let them see it. We're okay, we're gonna get it out. We're gonna let that you know, We're gonna make you uh, wait for a minute. Go away, <laughs> for little two whole hours. Right. <laughs> so the parsnip puree is really simple. You yeah. just it's a, just parsnips and parsnips and turnips. And turnips. Yeah. So I can't do white potatoes. They give that wasn't kind of, mashed potatoes. That wasn't. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's and her really son they're, they're, and her I love, love parsnips, wow. and this is the best parsnip puree I've ever Thank had. You. It is like they're so light Thank and you. fluffy. Yeah, so Isn't white lovely? potatoes with for my autoimmune disease just cause inflammation in my body. So I do some different root vegetables instead. So go ahead and dump in a little bit of chicken stock. Okay. We've got some more of that oh, ghee just to kind of add a little bit of a buttery flavor. And while we're pulsing this, I really want to show our viewers your amazing cookbook. It's um all it's against all grain oh. celebrations. This is such a beautiful cookbook. It's yes. pale. Thank you. It's gluten free, but it's full of flavor. Yes, absolutely. That is one thing. When I was diagnosed early on and after switching my diet, I never wanted to get rid of the flavor. That is roasted Brussels sprouts with a bacon jam. Oh, uh, uh, bacon uh, jam. Uh, bacon jam. One of our favorite Thanksgiving side dishes, but we eat it all year long. And then that's a chai poached pear. So kind of like a chai oh my gosh, flavored, so and you poach the pears. It looks really beautiful, but it's yeah. super simple, so it can press your guests. You know, if you're having oh. people for the holidays. So we're just gonna oh, sorry, sorry. move this. And we're the first thing we looked at was the um, yes, the shrimp. Yes. So that was prosciutto and apricot glazed shrimp. Oh. It's a really great appetizer for oh. holiday parties, New Year's. That's actually from the New Year's chapter. One question. Where do I get this bacon jam? You have to make it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but it's really easy, really easy. All right. But if I knew somebody who made right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's where oh, I think you were going. going. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now oh. let's show them All right. the finished okay. product. Now we're going to reveal here. So. Oh. <laughs> we got a bigger drum. I like it's that. I like well. that. Yeah. I can't get right. the so. Ta -da. Ta -da. have braised, They're, the bones really just kind of are left alone. The meat just comes right off of them and then we've got them all here. On top of the parsley Yes, puree. yes, so and we can just garnish with a little bit of that chopped parsley just to kind of add oh, some, yeah. you know, when you've braised meat in the oven for a couple hours, it's not exactly the most beautiful thing in the world, but it's definitely the most oh, tasty. Oh, it looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. that is so, delicious. That's a little gorgeous. green on top. Yeah, you it know just what? I'm gonna Give Matt this oh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right oh yeah, there's more. Oh, a little more. Where are those well, tongs? Debbie, yeah, you have to try. Here, hand me your I mean, plate. just try a little bit. No, I mean, just a little. I'll have the rest. You know, just try a little bit. You do bite. not need a knife for this. Okay. That's for no, sure. No, you don't. Oh my goodness. So, so good. you know, if you can't find short ribs or you can't afford them, then you can definitely get a chuck roast and cut it into some uh, bigger chunks. Uh, it's not going to be quite as tender as a short rib, but it's a really great stand-in for a more affordable. I love price. the brown. I love oh the kind of crispiness goodness. on the outside and how tender yeah. this is butter yeah. on wow, the inside. Wow, good. It's I'm so, so good. glad. This is so good. The like, full recipe is available by going to hallmarkchannel.com and connect with Danielle on her website. Website against all grain. It's all their way. Mm. Isn't it good, Debbie? This is the best oh, birthday cool. meal I could have. Happy birthday! You know Debbie. what? Just for your birthday, <laughs> Debbie. It's on me. Oh. Oh. I got this. I got this for you. Big of me. Thank I know. You.